So today we're going to talk about something we have talked about slightly bit before in the previous episode, which is arrays. Because when it comes to arrays, which you might know from other programming languages, we have something called multidimensional arrays. That simply means that we can put arrays inside arrays and then add multiple pieces of layers of data. So I'm going to show how to do that inside C sharp. So as you can see in front of me here, I do actually have the example we had from the previous episode where I, where I just talked about arrays. And we had this example where we created a array that was a string of names, and we just had four names inside this string of names. So as you can see on the screen here, this is the exact same example as we had previously. So the idea here is we can create something that is called a a multidimensional array. And there's a couple of different kinds we can talk about. There's something called a rectangular array, and then there's something called a jacket array. And it just basically means that we have one type of array that has the same number of, uh, what should you say, uh, rows and columns all the way through. And then there's some types of arrays that might have different types of, um, you know, number of data inside this multiple, multi <laughs> it simply means that we can have different sizes of rows inside the different columns inside the multi-dimensional multi array. So scrolling down a little bit, you can see I created a rectangular array, which is the one that we can create where we have the same number of uh, items inside each row. When it comes to the columns, you might have inside a multi-dimensional array. So to give an example here, you can see that I created a new array, but we create them slightly different when we create multi-dimensional multi arrays. Instead, we just simply create a, a variable. We set it to some kind of name. In this case, I, I call it names list. And when we have to define the number of data that is going to be inside the array before, in a regular array, we would actually just define that we have four pieces of data inside of it. When it comes to multi-dimensional multi arrays, we need to define, first of all, how many columns do we need to have inside this multi-dimensional array, but also how many pieces of data are going to be inside the row inside each column. So to give an example here, you can see that I created a new string array. So this is going to be a multi-dimensional array with strings. And I want to have four columns, and I want to have two pieces of data inside each row inside the columns here. So going down, you can see I started my curly brackets just like we did with a regular array. But instead of just start typing uh, data into the array, I created a second pair of curly brackets with the data inside of it. So because I said I was going to have two pieces of data inside each row, I decided to put two pieces of data, which is going to be the name of the person and then how old they are. And then on the next line, followed uh, what do you call followed by a comma in between them because we want to make sure we separate them. I just simply created another row of data. So we actually created one, two, three, and four, which is what I defined in here, pieces of columns that has data inside of it. So you can kind of see how it makes sense there. Now I do also want to show how we actually output data because you might be thinking, well, how do we actually get the data out from this array if it has like these multiple dimensions inside of it? Uh, when we do want to write it out inside uh, our console, what we just need to do is we need to go ahead and write the name of the array or the multi-dimensional multi array we have here. And then we need to first of all define which column do we want to get data from and then what number of data are we trying to get here. So in this case here, I'm going to column one. So we start from zero, one. So this is the one I'm, I'm trying to get something from. And then number zero is going to be the first piece of data, which means I'm going to output John inside the console. Um, so it's, it's really that simple when it comes to outputting stuff from these uh, multi-dimensional arrays. Now I do want to point out that we can add even more dimensions to one of these arrays. So as you can see right now, we just have two dimensions. Uh, we have one and two. And if I wanted to, just to scroll down, I can actually go ahead and add a third dimension in this next example here. So what I did is I created just a little bit of a smaller array just so we could fit everything on screen. So this time we have two, two and three, which means that if I go in, we have the curly brackets, then I create one set and a second set because I have two dimensions here. Then once we go inside, let's just take the first one, go into it, we have one, two dimensions more. So as you can see, that's defined by the second two. And then inside each of these, I have three pieces of data. I have the name, I have the year, and I also have what I call it a person has. 
Now, I know I sort of repeated the data here, but it was just to sort of give an example. So you can see I have three defined for three pieces of data. And again, it's the same thing if we have to output this inside the browser, we just define, you know, the dimension that we're trying to access. So in this case, it's going to be number one. So we go in here, this is zero, one. So this one down here, then I want to get number zero, which is the first one, which is this one right here. And then number one is going to be zero, one. So I'm I'm outputting 28 years old inside this example here. Now we do also have something called a jacket array. Now what you'll notice is that if I were to go back up and just look at the previous example, you can see that every single time we go into the furthest n uh, part of the array, the furthest n dimension, you can see that we have one, two, three pieces of data and it's the same way all the way down through all the different dimensions. So if I want to say, well, what if I don't want to have the eye color on this first guy up here, but I want to have it on the second guy, then how are we going to do that? Because we have to uh, predefine it inside these brackets here. Well, in this case, we create something called a jacket array, which is slightly different. So what we start doing is we do the exact same thing. We first need to create a variable, we give it some kind of name, and then we set it equal to new and then the type of data that we want to create in here. In this example, instead of strings, I decided to create a number, so integers. And the first thing we need to do is we need to say, well, how many columns do we want to have inside this dimension here? So in this example here, you can see I decided that we're going to have four. And then you'll notice that I followed it up with a empty brackets right next to it. So the reason we did that is because as you can see at the side, we're going to have four dimensions inside this, this array here, uh, or inside this multi-dimensional array. So further down, I then create a line of code where I say, okay, inside the first dimension, inside the, the first one, we're going to be having two pieces of data inside that one. Then in the next dimension, which is number one, we're going to have three pieces of data. Then in the next one, we're going to be have one piece of data, and in the last one, we're going to have three pieces of data. So we simply define the rows, like how many pieces of data we want inside the rows by setting it equal to whatever um, is inside the brackets here. So in this sort of way, we can define, you know, how many pieces of data we want to have inside each row. Now, in order to actually fill in the data, because you may notice that I haven't actually created um, this mess that we have here, like this tree, of data inside the second example. And that's because when we want to insert data, we do actually need to say, well, inside the first dimension, I want to take the first spot where we're going to have data, and I want to set it equal to some kind of piece of data. So in this case here, that would mean if we were to take the previous example here, that would mean the first dimension, and then the first piece of data, if that makes sense. So that's how we fill in the data. And then you can actually see, I just create a second example where I fill in the next piece of data. And again, we can do the next one. So we can say in the next one, there's going to be you know, another piece of data. And if we want to fill in the next dimension, we just simply, well, actually in this case here, there was only going to be two. So we can't actually do that right there. We do actually need to jump to the next one. So here we would say, you know, then the next one gets filled in. So there is a way for us to do this. It is slightly more complicated when it comes to jagged arrays, but this is how we, we can do this if we want to have a multidimensional arrays that has different, you know, number of data inside of it. Now, the way we access it is actually wrong down here. This is not how we do it. It is actually by referring to the brackets that we created. So in this case here, I want to access the first dimension which right here is number zero, so the first one. And then I might want to access the second data inside of it. Uh, we also want to make sure we create names list three because that is the right name for it. So in this way here, we can also go in and we can grab data from this array here. So this is the basic idea when it comes to multidimensional arrays. Um, it is something that you probably will use in the future quite a bit when, when you get to you know more complicated projects. Uh, for now, we're not gonna continue further with this until we actually get to another project. So, but it is something I thought was nice for you to know about when it comes to arrays. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and I will see you in the next one.